say hi. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. Great to have you with us this morning. I am Reverend Pam Gagan, and this is the Center for Spiritual Living, and welcome to those on Facebook and here with us on our annual meeting day. Yay! Oh my gosh! Teddy and Lisa are here. I am so excited. He turned his back on me. Oh, my gosh. I'm glad you're here. Anyway, so this is who we are. <laughs> today. Alberto, yay! Our wonderful Rev Lynn and, uh, and Buzz uh, Noe, yay! <laughs> and our Marcia behind the stage, but you will see her, yay! And our lead practitioner, Pamela Bailey. It's wonderful to be in your presence today. Oh, really wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, and as we now... Uh, uh, start the morning, I want to invite our Rev. Lynn up to uh, do our opening for us. Yay, Linny. Yay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley. Yay. <laughs> we are a happy bunch, and it's so, so wonderful to see so many people here. Our vision is awakening humanity to its, magn its spiritual magnificence. And the way we do that is teaching and demonstrating spiritual principles for living an abundant and fulfilling life in a compassionate and welcoming community. And we used to have real candles here, and we lit the flames of faith. But these are the candles of faith, which we do now. Um, we don't light them anymore since we tried to burn down the sanctuary. Um, so the candles of faith represent our appreciation and our oneness with all religions that step forward in love, religions, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, 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 Sufism, Christianity, yell them out, yell out all the peaceful religions. I don't hear you at all. <laughs> there you go, there you go. What was all that whooping about? <laughs> so there is that fine thread that runs through all religions, and that fine thread is love. We are love. We come from love, and we honor our oneness within us all. And now it's my pleasure to introduce, and I'm looking down here, um, Marcia up on the stage. I'm sorry, sorry, Marcia. Come on up here, Marcia. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome. And we have a treat. We have a treat. Uh, Reverend Betty Ann Brennan created these affirmations that are just timeless and wonderful. So please read with me. I am God's beloved light in my world, and I illumine every path wherever I go, bringing my good into every circumstance. I say yes to God. I go forth into each day with the expectancy that God meets every need. I release all fears and hesitations 
For I know that God supports my thoughts and my actions. It is a pleasure to turn quietly to God regularly during the day for guidance, remembering I am a spiritual being. And together we say, and so it is. Hi, and uh, so what I want to do is thank you, and also this is the um, uh, annual meeting, and it's the first annual meeting without Reverend Betty. Well, no, she wasn't at the next, the last one, but we are coming up to her celebration of a year that she has been in the heaven world with us. Um, but the talk today is about to those who uh, are given much, much is required, and so here's a song from Limo Patel about... Uh, to my people. From the day that we were born, your mom hugged us with warmth, and we grew because we knew we had all your support. From the fams, the friends, and love was medicine to giving us the strength to rise when we were sin and the knowledge that we gained every single mistake but you never back down through this you taught me faith every single one of you through being you you do find a way to spread love and truth through me and you and it's because of you i grew because of you i grew because of you i made it through without residue because of you we all have a home to come to you're a blessing to us all so keep just being you to my people Predecessors, the wisdom and the knowledge that they pass only blesses. Shot the Marcus Barbie, MLK, Malcolm Gandhi, Bob Marley, Michael Jackson, Tupac, they remind me the power of the pen, the music and the voice. Everything they've done, let me know I have a choice. Now for my people, my pop sister, the best friend, acquaintance, love a cool book, and even if I don't know your book, you do it. Help me see my way through service space, thank you, share it on the To my people. to love, you go to hug when push comes to shove, turn the cheek, forget, walk away, tomorrow is another day, your life is short, helping hands to say, a holier than the ones who say. people. Isn't that wonderful? It's hard not to smile, isn't it? So let's have 
an opening treatment to get us in the spirit of the code. Let's close our eyes, please. <laughs> This is it, right here, right now, in this moment, this is the presence, the presence of something wonderful, something creative, loving, guiding, intelligent, the presence of God, and I know with absolute certainty, as I speak in the first person, that I am divine, individualized expression of all that God is. Therefore, on this day, God's day by means of me, I step forward dynamically, spiritually, with my curiosity and my openness, my anticipation of learning wonderful things from Reverend Pam this morning as she speaks with us, and hearing truths in the music and the songs and beautiful music that Alberto plays. I know there is truth, there's a message everywhere for me in this beautiful service today. This is my service, God's service by means of me. And so I'm open, I'm receptive. My heart, although always full, is still open for more love. I'm so grateful for these loving truths of oneness with source and great anticipation and eagerness of how this wonderful service unfolds. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. What's the buzz? What, what, what's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's a happening. My name's Buzz. Here's a what's a happening. All right, well, I want to say welcome all of you to April's first Sunday. Our gathering here live will make this a fun day. The Reverend Pam will soon be up here with our lesson. I'm certain you'll all find it a very joyful session. I'm certain I'm, her title is, To Those Given Much, Much is Required. It will teach us how to achieve the spiritual perfection that we desired. I'm very excited to hear what Rev. Pam has to say, but for now, here's the announcements for today. At 11.45 today, let's all be clear, our Spiritual Center annual meeting will occur right here. We value all your input, your proxies, and your votes, which allows us to make improved service notes. We'll provide a light lunch to give you something to eat, and we're excited to have us all be here to meet. We will honor Yvonne, who's leaving our board. Your attendance here live will be her reward. Morning mindfulness takes place on Wednesday mornings at 9. These meditations with Reverend Pam will connect you with the divine. They take place at 9 a.m. on Facebook Live. These are once a week, s week sessions that will help you to thrive. Reverend Pam's title for this week is Walking on the Earth. Join in to learn how your life can find a rebirth. At 7 p.m. Thursdays on Facebook Live, our midweek spiritual uplift will boost your divine drive. Reverend Pam is hosting this week's tune-up session. The Practice of Saying No is the title of her very uplifting lesson. At 4.30 p.m. on the fourth Sunday of this month, Lisa Coffey will be hosting a class you will want. The Wisdom of Vedanta enlightens our lives, thereby ensuring our divine purpose thrives. It happens April 24th, live on Zoom. Her guest and her theme will be announced soon. You can tune in to Lisa after our Sunday lesson. Constant Contact has the Zoom link for this enlightening session. And we are continuing with the two-for-one sale going on in our bookstore. It remains incredibly well stocked with fantastic things galore. There are lots of books and jewelry in stock that will give your life much glee. And today, when you buy something there, you get something else for free. A reminder that our center is here for you, so please let us know what we can do. The spiritual treatment that we provide will reveal your perfection and allow you to thrive. You can always leave a request by phone or send us an email from wherever you roam. And we're excited to once again be able to gather here live and our center is still dedicated to help us all thrive. Your loving donations keep our center going so we can be here to keep your wellness flowing. Later we will list the online ways to give, so please donate from wherever you live. And two other places where you can lend a hand, please do give them whatever you can. 
Ventura County Rescue Mission provides the homeless with much good, and the Ventura County Food Share feeds the needy in our hood. And a reminder that our center is part of Ralph's Community Contribution Program. A portion of whatever you spend at the store gives our center a small donation or more. Please do sign up or simply renew, and Ralph's will contribute to us at no cost to you. Our center's code number is JE859. You can sign up at the store or you can do it online. And another way to help our center for a while is to shop online using Amazon Smile. When you complete your purchase for the items you got, it donates to our center right on the spot. And finally, the new month of April is now right here. So let's all go and find some. She has to say, thank you all. You're my life, you're my breath, you're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hand, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light in the dark, you're the spark, you are fun, you're my mom, you are water, you're the stars, you're my daughter, you're my friend till the end, you're my dreams, you're my father, you're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround, I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the cloud, you're my pain, you're my sorrow, you're my hope for tomorrow, you're the strength when I'm hollow, you're the path that I follow, you're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize that everything all that is Everything will feel gorgeous. Cause what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine How do I get back to all of this magic And spread the love so everybody can have it Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor If I got a family or if I'm all alone Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan But there's a million things that I can be grateful for So I lift up my hand
exist The small things that are bliss The gift to realize that everything is a gift Good morning, everyone. I love those videos, and you have to wait till you're sure it was the last scene and the last whatever. So I am Pamela. Oh, oh, yeah. Lights, Marcia, please. Oh, yes. And now we have a lot. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone. I'm Pamela Bailey, as announced by Buzz earlier, our poet laureate. <laughs> and I just, you know, I'm delighted to be here, and I can't wait to hear what Reverend Pam has to say about, you know, those of us who've been given much. Much is expected, yes. So first I'd like to introduce the other practitioners and ministers here. And so you've seen um, Reverend Lynn and Buzz Noe. Buzz is a practitioner. Lynn, obviously, is a reverend. Marcia at the back, our technical genius, she is another practitioner. I e even saw her head duck down, but she was on screen without her mask. And then our wonderful Reverend Pam. And we are all here to know the truth for you, which is that you are whole, complete, and perfect this very moment. And that's the truth. And then anything that doesn't look like that, and heaven knows we do have those things in our lives and that is just something to accept and to deal with and to know that the truth is our greatness and our power when I heard this particular topic I thought oh that is really interesting and then you know I was thinking of well who are these people who've done so much and then did were they given that much? And, and so the people that I think of, especially you know, having lived through the 20th century, or a fair portion of it, the first one I would think of is Mother Teresa. And her famous response when people commented on how much she did was, I don't do great things. I do small things with great love. And we can all do that. And then another person to actually, to whom a great deal was given was Eleanor Roosevelt. And she was this woman who stepped up and took action and stood for things in her life. And one of her sayings was that you must do something every day that you're afraid of. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, because there's something within me that is greater than that fear. And then I have wonderful quote from the Dalai Lama. At least I think I do. I don't know. Just let me get it in. Okay, and so we all know who the Dalai Lama is, and he, we're fortunate he is still on the planet with us. It is also helpful to think of adversity not as much as a threat to our peace of mind, but rather as the very means by which patience is attained. And so, yes, when there are things to be done, we have been given those things to be done because it, it is in, on our path. And, of course, I'm going to quote something from Ernest Holmes, who was our founder. And um, he, goodness, he lived 
over 100 years. I mean, he was born over 100 years ago, and it was in the 1920s that he started doing his teaching. And so again, this is, we're given much, and there's much for us to do. And I know that sometimes what stops me is, oh, but it's so much, or I might fall on my face. Well, so what if I fall on my face? And if I get started, others can join in. So I am going to just quote one quote from Ernest, and it is, the answer to every problem already exists in the mind of God. And you are in the mind of God, and the mind of God, that very mind of God, is flowing through you this minute. So knowing that that power is within us, let's, so as we say, let us turn within and have a prayer. And assume, you know, open your eyes, close your eyes, sit however you wish, but just open to... That space, that knowingness, that allness of life itself, and know that it is this very moment blessing you, blessing me, blessing all of us, and we are part of that blessing. So as I go into this prayer, I know that I am one with all that is, and Just as being a human being, I am that divine spark. And so knowing that that divinity flows through me, I do have power. I do have presence. I do have a voice. And that voice has power. And knowing that, knowing that each and every person here in this room, on Facebook, and each and every one of us on this planet, in these wonderful videos, each and every one of us is a divine light. And as we come together, that light grows. And these days, there are lots of things that call for attention. There is more than enough suffering and hunger and certainly more than enough war. And who we can be with our aligning with our God presence is in every moment standing for the dignity and the beauty of humanity and that love and that intelligence that flows through me right now and as I am here in these days in these days where there are a lot of a lot of circumstances that call for our attention and our prayer and our action, knowing that I wouldn't notice that if it weren't for me to do something, to say something, to say a prayer, whatever it is, that I am part of the answer. I can make a difference, and I am committed that as Wayne Dyer famously said, don't die with your music in you, that I will sing my song, I will make my contribution, and I will show up in the best way possible. And knowing that each and every one of us, right here and in our Facebook community, each and every one of us has unique gifts, unique powers, and each and every one of us is here to join in that expression. And I know absolutely that when I show up, when I speak up, when I roll up my sleeves and take action, that I am fulfilled and I am growing and that I am a blessing. And in that, yes, that is who I came to be, to be that blessing, to be the person who can be counted on for whatever it is. And so knowing that that is revealed and that all are blessed, I am so grateful for all of this. I release this knowing it is already heard and in action. And together here, let us say, 
and so it is. And now I have the great pleasure of introducing our wonderful Alberto, who's going to play something wonderful. Do you want, <laughs> do you want the microphone? Not, it, al it always is. Always, always, always. Do you want the mic? Thank you, Pamela. And uh, um, Reverend Pam asked me to play his first song, um, and it's a song that all of you know. It's called Alleluia. four months ago and so so that is the best musical uh, interpretation of course it's the only musical interpretation of the song. no it, it, it just and I always you know the major fall and the mighty lift and the broken hallelujah and that kind of is what my talk is about today uh, and the talk title of course is to those given much much is required and what inspired this talk, thank you, Alberto. I never said thank you, thank you. <laughs> to the news and uh, the pandemic, the Ukraine, and, and then the final thing that really hit home with me, and I'm embarrassed to say, is the Academy Awards. Oh. I, with Will Smith, 
I, I am just telling you that, uh, first of all, I grew up in a Hollywood, uh, in, in Hollywood Burbank, and uh, I had a family that was much more involved in uh, John F. Kennedy sleeping with Marilyn Monroe than any world politics. And so I always had this view, and we never, never miss the Academy Awards. They're almost like sacred to me. And when I saw Will Smith, uh, oh my God, wh who's the actor? I mean, who's the comedian? Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Oh my God, I can't believe I, I th forgot his name for a minute. Anyway, when Will Smith and that interaction with Chris Rock, I thought, you know, this is the major dichotomy. It is a major dichotomy in the moments that uh, all of a sudden you see even something right at home uh, where there is so much conflict, so much anger, so much on the surface that we are not even aware of. And when it is out picturing around the world on something like the Academy Awards, I don't even know how popular they are anymore. To be quite frank, I hadn't seen a lot of the movies, and now I, I want to obviously see the, the, the ones that won all the awards. But when you see this out picture on something like the Academy Awards, you look and it mirrors everything we've been going through right now. We are um, pent up, angry, we are upset about so many things right now. The pandemic that's kept us small in our homes, um, the now the Ukraine war, and the uh, economy where the gas is, I mean, I, I, have, I have a gas heater car and I aspire to get an electric car, but the last time I had one, the rats ate it. So it's, it's holding me back, <laughs> getting an electric or even an EV, because they love the, the coating. I learned this. Uh, <laughs> it was total because the, at, the rats ate the electric coating all around the electric wires. And so I'm thinking, oh my God, I even bought coyote pee and put it around it and everything. I mean, I'm just telling you. So now I'm afraid to buy an electric or an EV, anything right now. But when you see it out picturing in ways, you have that dichotomy that lies within all of us. We are the broken and the holy hallelujah all at the same time. There is so much happening to us. Ernest Holmes said, uh, life is ever giving of itself. We must receive, utilize, and extend the gift. Success and prosperity are spiritual attributes belonging to all people. I believe that the best preparation for, I said this, for a prayer for life is to become an intensely human being. Uh, that's why we walk on earth in this body suit, as I say. It is for us to house that which needs to come forth for our growth and our own preparation. It is our journey home to wholeness. And without the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, the, the looking at what we is the appearance of chaos, actually, if we look back in history, always out picturing in something greater, bigger, better, badder, as I say, or better, not badder. <laughs> I always say get down with your own bad self, too, which means get down with your own good self. But <laughs> anyway, but when you see this, and you have to remember that these are the times that call us to be those who have been given so much. And you look, I just, I look at the people in the Ukraine and the power and the presence, of course, President Zelensky too. And then I see someone snap on stage who is a hero on the films. All of the kids see him as a hero and to have him react like that, and of course, maybe that Chris, uh, not of course, Chris Rock also with his, his uh, painful uh, comment about uh, Jada Pinkett Smith, who has alopecia and has no hair. I mean, it all just played out in front of us, but it wasn't just that incident. It's the incident that's playing out in every single corner of the earth right now on this planet. So what is our role here? Our role, of course, I'm going to say it, and you already know it, is to step up. But I also believe, uh, Henry David Thoreau said, and I believe this too, do not be too moral. You may cheat yourself out of too much life. Aim above morality. Be not simple good. Be good for something. And that is what we're here for. We're here to be good for something. From as far back as biblical times, the appearance and chaos, as I've already said, has outpictured with the highs, the lows, the ups and downs. And I'll never forget 
uh, when I was in ministerial, which was a long time ago, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> anyway, so when I was in ministerial, one of the things we looked at were like all the diseases that came along, like the Black Plague was to bring, bring enlightenment. Right after the Black Plague, enlightenment came to the earth. Some people even said that uh, HIV, that AIDS came to teach us how to love unconditionally, and that uh, the tuberculosis, uh, we knew someone who was our, our lead practitioner, Candy Rich, at the Westlake Church, and she had tuberculosis as a child. And her theory was, and also the theory of many, was it was the yearning to breathe free. At that point in time, it was especially during World War II, she was on a train, I'll never forget this story, and she was a young girl, and she was coming out to Southern California where it was hot and dry. So that's what they did. They put them in, in rest places so they could breathe and not be challenged by any, you know, uh, toxins. Uh, well, that ship sailed. Now, <laughs> now, now where do we send them to Mars, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, but she's on this train, and this soldier is talking to her, and he's obviously very smitten with her. And then the time came where she had to get up, and she needed a wheelchair, and she was so embarrassed. But she went, and she was one of the first um, people that she knew of everybody in that place um, died from tuberculosis but her, but she listened to Emil Kue in the 19, uh, early 40s or whatever it was, and every day she would listen to him, and his famous line is, I'm getting better and better every day in every way. They told her she'd never have children, she shouldn't marry, she married, she had three children, she had a rich, rich, and it's so funny, she na named, named uh, someone uh, Ray Rich. I thought, what a great name, Candy Rich. <laughs> and she had an extremely rich, exciting life, very exciting. So when, regardless of what seems impossible, uh, the divine love within us is what we really desire most. We want to rise higher in our, um, in our morality. So one of the moments in a microsecond in earthly time that I felt spiritually connected was the day that I knew that I knew that I knew that all things were God, divine spirit, and God is in all things. Thich Nhat Hanh, the famous Buddhist um, nun, not nun, the <laughs> <laughs> he was not a girl. Anyway, the miracle is not to walk on water, but to walk on the earth. So there are moments when we all can transcend the dualistic system and reconcile and embrace the whole mess, as I say. That's what divine oneness is, and that's what connection means to me. It's not being disconnected and saying, we're going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, it's about being, ex seeing, and going beyond all of that. So when, regardless of what impossibility seems in any situation, we come to these moments when you have to just throw open your arms and say, I just let go and let God because I don't see the bigger picture. I don't see what's happening here, but I know there's something happening. So how many of us, you can raise your hands, momentarily have fallen from grace and have been brought to our knees in pain? And we just, we just uh, don't know what to do. And those are the times when you do let go and you let God. And that is when what you're asking for most in those moments is your faith and your, and your beingness to be restored. In our darkest hours, what transcends and awakens it? all philosophies and all religious um, films and ideas and, and, and religions is uh, that outpicturing of that highest good. And again, Will Smith was that hero, and with great power comes great responsibility. And when we listen to that phrase and we break it down, from those who are given much, much is required, First is the truth that divine spirit God gives much is the first truth. Second is the idea that no one has the right to live alone for himself. Third, we're on this all together. We're on this planet Earth walking all together. Third is, and we know, I'm sorry, and we know this as these thoughts, as the ADD comes in, as the, anyway, so as these thoughts, but we now know we breathe the same air, we drink the same water, 
and that when we say you are not just a drop in the ocean, you are the ocean in a drop, we are still drinking the same water that we came on the planet with. I always say it is constantly recycled. The air is constantly recycled. We are drinking the water that the Christ and the Buddha and everybody drank at right here, right now. But we're also drinking the pee of the dinosaurs, who were the most successful living creatures on this planet. So let us know we have that success rate, because so far, they, they, out, they, well, millions of years, they're gonna, they've already been here longer than we have. So anyway, and they're still providing for us, which is really interesting with oil. So the truth is that the divine spirit gives much to those who give also, also very much. And lastly, we should use our gifts and talents. No one, as I say, we came in with the unique fingerprint of God. And I used to think, how is this possible? How is it that we have no other fingerprints like anybody else? How does a grain of sand have no other images other than its own? And then you think about the universes and the stars yet to be found and how the billions and billions we don't even know about. And each one is that unique fingerprint of God. And as someone rightly said, and I can't remember who said is, you can't be anybody else. That's already been taken. It's your turn to show up with your talents and give back to the earth in the best way you know how. And whether it's the small gifts that uh, Mother Teresa said, you can do great things in small ways for many, many people just by being there. So for the generosity of God uh, in its boundless uh, uh, way, again, it is given to us as we believe, and not only as we believe, but as how we give forth. When you stop giving forth, everything blocks up. Nothing comes your way. But when you come forth in greater ways than ever before, in your, in your, your acts, your kindness, your words, how you are with other people, then that is what streams forth onto the planet too. And so, Maybe all of this outpicturing of what seems to be great chaos worldwide and uncertainty, it is building up to that moment of the gl glorious hallelujah. Not, no longer broken. We don't see it that way. We see that there is something greater here. And when you see someone like a Zelensky, like a Nelson Mandela, like so many of those who have gone before us, that absolutely have stepped up beyond their own personal pain, their own personal gain for something greater. And how they did that was, was uh, I love John Lewis, too, uh, the Congressman John Lewis, that where they came and they gave us good trouble, give us good trouble here so that it can enlighten us and challenge us to move forward. The only thing we need to do is ask, and when you feel uh, at one minute with the divinity, then your consciousness absolutely streams forth and embraces all of who you are. In those mon moments when you know that you know that you know that this or this and something greater is happening, and when you can look back at a history, then you know that there is something greater happening on this planet. So good comes pouring through us. As Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I'm not just talking about financial gain because to me, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I learned this from the Buddhist. So if you think I'm only late here, no. <laughs> I wish I could say I was different. And I asked my sister one time, who was older than I was, I said, how long have you known me, Dee Dee? She said, all of your life. I said, how many years have I been late? She said, all of your life. And I'm better than I used to be. <laughs> I'm better than I used to be. I'm just out in, in, in another planet sometimes, I think, and I'm not tracking time. But how you do one thing is how you do everything. And that, I believe, comes forth in so many ways. Uh, one of the things I am is I've always been uh, committed to things. I've always been committed to people and family and, and church and my, and my spirituality. And that remains also not only my lateness, but my on-timeness with the divine spirit pouring in and through and as me has always been there. So it is that dichotomy again. So this requirement of uh, being greater with other people, it's because no man is an island. We live on this planet Earth, this beautiful 
gorgeous planet in the sky. We are one world. There's no separation. And so it's time for us to step up in so many ways, including giving up, maybe I'll go to a bicycle, including my, <laughs> my, my gas car. So, <laughs> however, sometimes when generosity is pointed, um, uh, poured on us, we forget. And that's when we have to think about, wait a second, this isn't all about just about me. I'm not the one that's being suffering. I'm not in the Ukraine. You know, I just thought about little things, like I take Synthroid every morning. I mean, I'm in, I don't want to lay up. I take Synthroid every morning. I have my thyroid, you know, is gone. So <laughs> anyway, and I thought, my God, in the Ukraine, I couldn't even get sent. I'd be dead by now. I mean, it's little things, and I just get up and I go, I am so thankful for it all and for whatever reason I am here in the United States of America and that I have all the bare necessities and more being poured on me in so many ways. So in the song that I asked Alberto to play, and you played so beautifully, absolutely beautifully, thank you, with emotion, and it is an emotional song. There is even, we, he asks in that song, in the words, is there even a God? And yet he conveys there's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard, the holy or the broken hallelujah. I invite you to listen to the holy hallelujah that brings wholeness to all of us. Because a blaze of light in every word, that's an amazing line, every word. Every word is powerful. What we think, what we say, what we do in our actions without taking. I also watch Daniel Tiger. See, I have such a variety of shows. I watch Daniel C Tiger with my grandchildren. And Daniel Tiger is, before you act and get mad, take a deep breath, count to 10, <laughs> and then start all over again. You know, it's so interesting. Before you act from that place of anger that shows up in that emotional thing, take that deep breath. Take, think about what you can do that is a better way of acting. Because the turning points in all of our lives with every decision made is comes from what we think, how we react, and who, how we act upon it. And when we take that time to, to from the heart to the, I, the heart and the head, the heart has more uh, brain cells than the head, but when we think with our heart and we look out and we see what we can do better, that is what makes us make our decisions better. And like our forefathers and our spiritual heroes who formed the Western and Eastern ethics and principles, we will be hurt, tested, measured, and challenged. Love will break our hearts, and only love and forgiveness will heal our hearts. But reality is we'll be faced with joy, with pain, but when we turn to a power greater than we are, which I call God, you can call it whatever you want, Spirit Divine, uh, Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, whatever it is, when you turn to that higher power, that is when you don't surrender to despair and, and nihilis nihilism, that's when our awakened moment comes, holding the high watch and persevering to see beyond the face of the appearance of the cruel world, there is only the holy heart opening, awakening just around the corner. Louis L'Amour said, another great quote from one of those heroes, <laughs> there will come a time when you believe everything is finished and that will be the beginning. This is the beginning of something greater the world is full of conflicts and full of things that cannot be reconciled, but there are moments when we can transcend the dualistic system and reconcile and embrace this whole mess or this whole holy oneness. And I'm in, I'm in for embracing the whole holy oneness. So that's what I take away from me in this moment, that regardless of what seemingly is an, an impossibility, of all situations, there is a moment when you let go, let God, and again, embrace the situation and say, as our wonderful Betty Ann says, my life is unfolding perfectly no matter what. And now I um, just bless you on this, on this annual meeting day, and I invite our Alberto back up. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like that would cleanse it. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, not come up with that. Did you th plan this out before? Oh. No. oh, it was so. Are you going to what is it? Strawberry Scarborough, Scarborough, Fair. Scarborough Fair. Oh my God, it was Alberta. Thank you so much. Thank you so so much. That was incredible, and and I love true friend of mine. You know the yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, so together as we do. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Nikki. As we do the offertory, let's read this together. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is, and that's the way it is. <laughs>
Juliet, who is with you? Do I do I know you, honey? Oh, what is your name, hon? Brittany, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you so much. And uh, now it is my honor to introduce our Rev. Lynn for our closing. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. That was a beautiful talk you gave today. Thank you. That was wonderful. I'm inspired. I'm going to go out and do something big. All right. Uh, you know, given that this is our annual meeting today and that we're very focused on, on the vitality of our center and that we've already established that the center uh, uh, is, is looking to grow and does need more donations, so I'm going to do another prosperity prayer, just a double whammy. Double whammy. Okay, so let's close our eyes, please. In this expanded consciousness, we've experienced a wonderful service today, a million dollar service. And so I'd like to pray into a reality the reality that we are always abundantly supplied. And so I affirm now and always that there is one power, one presence, one way of life. This is all God, forever full and complete. And since I am God's limitless means to reveal it itself, then I reveal the richness fullness and absolute abundance that I already am. Prosperity is what I am and prosperity is what I eternally reveal. I give abundantly to this center from my spiritual wealth. I prosper this center prospers and the world is blessed. And together we say, and so it is. And so it's time to sing. Everybody, come on up here. It's time to sing and move the mics. <laughs> Right now, I know it in my mind. 